What's up, everybody? Amazing you're here to be in Bangkok. Um, it's really interesting to see how the ecosystem is growing here. I actually met Sanjay in Singapore in January 2019 at the depths of the previous bear market. Um, and I was really inspired by his story at the time of, of, of his dedication to growing the Thai ecosystem, to growing the Thai blockchain ecosystem. Um, so it's really good to see, to be here now in 2022 and to see how the ecosystem is growing um, and what an amazing event this is, um, really impressive to, uh, to see. Um, my, talk about, my talk today is going to be about how we can fix the flaws of our broken digital economy. And I'm going to start with a bit of a personal story. This is actually a talk that was originally done by Mark Smargan who is the CEO at Fuse. Mark is a technical innovator. He's a product genius. Uh, my version of this is going to be a bit more personal because I've actually been, um, I've actually seen, I've been in tech now for 10 years, so I've seen the evolutions from Web 1 to Web 2 to Web 3. Uh, back in 2011, I was given an amazing opportunity to work for a large multinational uh, called Kronos, based out of Boston in the US. A uh, huge company, well, you know, multi-billion dollar company, 5,000 people. Um, and at the time, this is before cloud, so we were selling licenses into, um, into companies, into enterprises, selling software licenses before the days of SaaS. Um, it was a really interesting company to work for. This is back in 2011, 12, 13, but I was really interested in what was happening in the startup world. Uh, I was spending lots of time on Bloomberg, for example, seeing the likes of Twitter listing, IPOing, Facebook IPOing, uh, and I was fascinated by this idea of startup culture, um, and I really wanted to get involved. So in 2013, I jumped ship and went to work for a company called Trustpilot, and at the time, Trustpilot had just raised $10 million, very early stage, um, they IPO'd last year on the London Stock Exchange for a billion dollars. So it's really interesting to look back now and the early culture that we created there and to see them having made it, essentially, having become a unicorn and, and, and made it. Um, however, you know, very much the, um, the, the perfect example of a Web2 company, where I was potentially a little bit more dismayed is where the who the beneficiaries were, essentially, of a company uh, like that. And in a, in, a, in a typical Web2 startup, the beneficiaries were, of course, the founders and the investors. Um, there wasn't the same feel as, you know, of sort of community that you get in, uh, in, in Web3, essentially. Um, and this is something that we see generally within Web2 companies. Those that benefit are the founders, the investors, the stories that are told are about how it's, you know, we're in it together. But of course, one of the things I love about crypto and what we'll get to is how ownership essentially gives empowerment to all. And that's the thing that excites me about being in this space and having seen the evolution. Um, I, I initially got involved in the space back in 2014 as an investor, as a, as a, as a, uh, as a Bitcoin investor. It was in 2016, at the time of the DAO hack, that I went to an event in Berlin. And I was fascinated by a talk that was done by some of the founders of the Ethereum Foundation. Um, I'm really starting to understand, you know, at the, at the time at which Ethereum was forking into Ethereum Classic, really starting to understand the sort of political ramifications, the financial ramifications the sort of philosophical ramifications. Um, and what I understood at the time was just how resilient this space was because ultimately everything was happening in a public environment. Everything, all, all, the, all, all the, you know, the, the scandal that initially, well, it wasn't a scandal, the, the, the hack that initially took, the, took place and the problems that it caused for Ethereum, everything was happening in a public forum. And ultimately people were given an opportunity to vote with their money, basically. Do you go down the Ethereum classic route or the Ethereum route, and obviously Ethereum won. Um, so it was at this time that I was so inspired by the industry that I decided to leave Web2. This is one of the best days of my life. 
um, back in June 2000, um, around June 2016, when um, I decided to leave Web2 and, um, and made it my mission, essentially, to get involved with the Web3 space. Um, started off with a company in Paris called uh, Monet's. We were, it was, it was a bankless meets blockchain project. I did some work for Cointelegraph during uh, 2019. And I've now been involved with Fuse for two and a half years since, uh, since DeFi summer in 2020. Um, and it's been an amazing ride so far. Um, <clears throat> what excites me, as mentioned, is ownership, essentially. In Web2, I didn't have ownership. One of the things that's powerful about this space is you know, I'm, I, I head up growth at, at Fuse. I hire people consistently. I can hire a writer. I can hire a blockchain developer, a business developer. And immediately, I can ensure that they have ownership in the platform by giving them tokens. And by doing so, they're ultra incentivized to make this space work. And that's what, that's what excites me. Um, I, I, I would say that 80% at least of the people in this conference right now are probably holding various different tokens. And it's almost as if we're just one big sort of nebulous company trying to change the world, essentially. And that's what really excites me about being, um, about being in this space. It's really about ownership for all um, and ensuring that everybody has an incentive to see the space do well. Um, so business models are changing, essentially. SaaS has done some amazing stuff. And uh, Web2 has been amazing in terms of creating amazing experiences. Um, amazing user experiences, great efficiency within the apps that we use and whatnot. And now we go to the next level. Um, you know, Web2 plus ownership equals Web3. Um, and that's the, thing that, um, that, that's the thing that excites me. Um, so Fuse. We're all about friendly blockchain. Blockchain doesn't need to be complicated. It did do five years ago or, you know, five to ten years ago, writing a 40-page white paper, uh, maths led on... Uh, on you know how we can uh, you know how we can use sort of very technical stuff to um, to push this industry forward was important. Our view is that we can make blockchain simple, so we're all about friendly blockchain. How can we make it ultra easy for builders, for entrepreneurs, and developers to build on the blockchain? And Fuse is almost considered. I'm from the UK. In the UK, we have a well-known hardware store called B and Q. I think in the US, it would be Homebase. I have no idea, unfortunately, what that would be in Thailand, but we're almost the, the home base or the B&Q of blockchain, the, the, ones, the, the place that you go to to, um, to find all of the, the tools that you need in order to build rapidly, to build amazing um, experiences, user experiences rapidly on the, uh, on the blockchain. So the way that we do that is we've got three layers to the stack, essentially. Um, this could be illustrated better on screen, but essentially you've got the base layer, which is Fuse blockchain, you have the middle layer, which is the charge platform. And once again, it's really a sort of one-stop shop. Everything that you need in one place to be able to build um, on the blockchain. I just... um, and then, of course, the application layer, which is what we see, which is what the user sees, uh, which is you know, the mobile wallets, the, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the desktop applications, etc., the stuff that users interact with. The idea being, once again, for it to be ultra-friendly and easy to use. We have a vibrant and diverse ecosystem. Our focus is on mainstream adoption, is on real-world experiences. Naturally, because Ethereum is an EVM-compatible blockchain, you'll, you'll get all kinds of diversity on there. You'll see DeFi, you'll see the likes of Beefy Finance on there, you'll see Sushi on there. You'll see NFT marketplaces like Tofu, NFT, and Artrific. Um, all use cases apply. The question is, what's our North Star? What is it that gets the Fuse team out, out of bed in the morning? The thing that gets us out of bed in the morning are real world, um, real world use cases. But we've got a growing sort of ecosystem of, uh, of projects. Um, to give a few examples, I think it... one would be people. People is a project based in the UK. Started off as a sort of Uber Eats competitor, a Grab competitor, if you like, in Southeast Asia. Imagine if every time you'd ordered a burger or sushi or whatever your favorite food is uh, on your favorite app over the past five years, you'd be receiving a token which has value within that ecosystem. 
Web 2 plus ownership equals Web 3. And people are ultra incentivized within that ecosystem to, um, to play a role, basically, to play a part, whether it's as a consumer, whether it's as a developer, a marketing person, a BD person, whatever it might be, everybody is incentivized um, to play a role there. Um, many other examples. The key one that I'd like to talk about today, however, is our very important family, uh, the, <laughs> the partnership that we have with Bitaza, who are, of course, a, um, a key sponsor, uh, a headline sponsor at the, um, at the event this weekend. We've been, with, we've been working with Bitaza now for over two years. Our story, our story started two years ago when the Mystic Valley Festival took place in November of 2022. Um, within literally, within around two months, we were able to put an entire payment solution in place for the catering and bars aspect, or drink, you know, the food and drinks aspect of the, uh, of the festival. Low cost, zero hardware required. Fuse, of course, used as the base layer, and Bitaza, which did an amazing job of implementing both merchant wallets, literally a, someone that was hired for the, for, for the festival were able to download a merchant version of the wallet on their iPhone or Android phone. Um, and then of course, festival goers were using the, uh, the merchant version, ultra simple implementation, a perfect example of how this technology uh, beats legacy uh, payments and, and finance essentially. Um, so we've been working with Bataza now for over two years. They're doing an amazing job um, in multiple different areas, of course, as you've probably seen. Um, but you know, the Freedom Wallet is the thing that is um, really helping them lead, play a leading role in Southeast Asia and across the world um, in taking this technology to the mainstream, essentially taking web free payments um, and loyalty programs um, to uh, a mainstream audience. So we're ultra happy to be working with them, uh, a key partner. We essentially work for Bitaza. Our team works for Bitaza. Our team works for people. Our team works for Good Dollar. They're the ones that are interfacing with the users. Um, they're the ones that are, that are going out there and putting these real world implementations in place. And the more we can understand their needs, the more we can serve the, the, the wider audience. Um, so that brings an end. Listen, we're in a bear market right now. There's no... Um, there's no sort of two ways about it. I've been in this space now for five years full time, eight years since I first got wind of what was happening. This is, um, it's an amazing time to be building, essentially. It's an amazing time to be, um, to sort of really, you know, to, 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 to double down. There's less noise um, and to really focus on how we can use this technology to make the world a better place, essentially. Things are improving constantly with technology, as far as I'm concerned. Web2 did amazing things for, um, for, you know, for everyday people over the past 20 years or so. And now we take things to the next level with, um, with Web3, with blockchain, with open source technology, um, and ultimately by empowering everybody through ownership to make this, um, yeah, to make this work for the widest possible, um, you know, set of people. Thank you.